Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we are gonna look at how to restring your square baler after you uh, bust a bale in the field and uh, break your, uh, your shear pin off. So let's get after it. Welcome to Man Time. All right, so here's what's going on. We have uh, just broken our shear pin in this exercise, we'll say. So what does that mean? Well, that means you should have went out and got a whole pack of uh, extra shear pins before you started bailing for sure. And uh, as you can see here, we've had this happen a few times to us here. So we'll dig through there and look for a shear pin that isn't sheared. Yeah, uh, for some reason I just like to save all my sheared, sheared pins, I guess. But what the clues to look for here, you know, of course you got hay bunched up in your pickup there. You hear a big snap, and then this just goes to going zing and free spooling with uh, with nothing, you know, spinning back here. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is uh, is clean out all your hay, and uh, we'll get started there. And then you're also going to want to clean out uh, some of this area right in here. All right, let's get started here. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty hard lesson to learn in the field, so maybe this will help you out a little bit. If, you're, uh, if you've never done this and you're planning on square bailing, uh, you're definitely gonna run into this. And the first time it happens, you're gonna be like, what the heck is going on? Um, you know, did my baler just break, or... Hopefully it's just like this, where, um... And, and this was at the end of last year. I just put it up because I was going to, uh... I had got my count for square bales that I needed, and I was going to round bales. Um... So I just, I just put it up. Not good stewardship for, uh... For your hay baler and your hay equipment, for sure. Um... But anyways, alright, so you cut the lines there, and then... Go to pulling out all your hay of course so I've got most of the hay cleaned out back there now we've got to uh, we've got to align our pin uh, with a little cam lever here with a hole through it on this side so you stick the bolt in through the back and uh, rotate it around until it comes through that hole there and then you've got this uh, locking nut that goes on the other side of it and if you were fortunate uh, enough to have this happen at the end of your cut like I was well it's not too bad but typically this is going to happen like mid cut uh, and you'll have to be doing this in the field and 100 degree weather at least if you're you know down south like I am which is just a lot of fun but you're probably going to be asking yourself, like, why did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? Well, it is actually your fault, uh, and there's a couple of reasons why it happened to you. One, uh, you had your tension set too tight on those levers that pack the hay. That sets your bale density. Um, those were set too tight, and you ended up uh, breaking your line or if you were like me, this is a worst, or yeah, a worst case or scenario. Uh, you were running uh, too fast through the field, or your hay was uh, a little too heavy on the ground, and uh, you jammed up your uh, your bale chamber with hay, and that's what happened to me. So, all right, we'll get this tightened up, and then. Uh, Go back to the bale chamber and talk about what is happening back there. Alright, so we just changed out that shear pin. Um, 
and our bale chamber is completely free of hay. At this point, you should be able to rotate um, the drum on the front, and it should go to uh, work in that. And if you broke your bale like halfway through, um, oh, one thing, if you're if you see like you you busted your wire or your string, and you've got only one string on your uh, bale, and the bales are falling apart coming out the back, what you want to do there is stop the tractor, let this keep rolling. Um, and then once that's you know it runs for a little bit then uh, shut it down and peel out the hay like that and then uh, you'll have to restrain one of your wires but it's not as bad as as what happened with this scenario where it uh, broke the shear pin and got clogged up so there was hay coming through right there as it was trying to cut so I had to get all that cleared out um, so let's see here so it's gonna be trying to make a bail I think So you saw there, it's it's trying to force more hay through there, um, and it did a pretty good job of it. And we've now got a newly tied um, piece of wire on here. It looks like so we'll have to cut all that out. All right, so uh, right down here was what was stopping it. You've got the hay coming through your pickup down there, through these, carrying it into the, the bale chamber down here. And then you've got this big knife uh, right here. A little bit tough to see there. But that is a sharp, uh, hardened steel blade. And uh, a good reminder that you always shut your PTO off before you get off the tractor, because if that blade is spinning round and round in there and uh, it decides to suck you up in there um, it would just chew you up pretty quick I mean that shear pin might uh, might hit or might not but you would be in big big trouble all right let's uh, let's give her another go here I got that pretty well cleared out in front of that uh, in front of the knife There we go, everything is, uh, is freed up now. Um, so at this point, what we want to do is, uh, is trip, our, um, trip our bale by rotating that up, getting this off of there, and then, uh, and then winding it around. Also gonna need to get the rest of this hay out of here. Um, so that way we can get our their wire reset here. Let's see, it is actually coming through there. So that's good. So let's get in here and I can show you how to reset this wire. Well, at this point, we've got our bale chamber cleaned out. We've got our wire coming through and it's riding on those rollers, so we're all good there. And then what we're going to do is just wrap it around the uh, first piece of angle we see here like that on that side and then we'll do the same on this side here Our wire coming through making sure that it's on the roller there and then line it up nice and straight and wrap it around just like that And 
and if you've never ran a baler this is how I would recommend you start running your baler um, manually by turning the wheel by hand so you can kind of get an idea of what's all going on once this uh, lever has tripped and so this is your bail monitor right here and as your bales going through there this is of course turning and this here is your uh, actual bale length setting so as it's rotating through there it reaches a certain length this trips and then all this stuff starts to activate and you can test all that manually by just rotating the wheel Okay, now, let's see here. If you've still got an old piece of wire in here, you're gonna need to pull that through. Or cut it out of there. All right, let's quick talk about a couple things here. First off, your ramshaft down there has a grease zerk on it, and that's one of the most critical um, ones to get just beside this uh, kind of support right there is going to be the most critical zerk to grease and then you can stop this uh, from moving because it might want to drift on you but your tool of choice you're going to want to have uh, to work on your baler is going to be these right here um, so I've got this and a half inch wrench and uh, that way I can get in there and get that zerk greased but that allows me to work on the baling wire and stuff as well all right guys now that we uh, know all the dangers of the rotating equipment unguarded uh, big knife in there and all the stuff that goes on back here um, all the wire cleaned out of our knotters and our uh, baling wire setup down there to make that first knot uh, now we can start the tractor um, you want to make sure your drive shaft for the machine is fairly straight um, and then just be aware, you know, you've got unguarded rotating equipment all over the place. Um, I remember reading somewhere that, like, farming is one of the most dangerous jobs, and, you know, probably is. But anyways, let's uh, make our first knot here and uh, get on with something else. Thanks for joining me today on Man Time, guys. Get out there. Have you some man time, too.